I needed a drive clutch for my Indy Trail. This sled has been featured in my earlier videos. On Craigslist, I was lucky enough to get first billing on this Indy, probably due to it being May, and it was in the hinterlands of Wisconsin. Its price was decent, and it only had around 3,200 miles on it. I knew it didn't run, but you know I had to give it a try. So I cleaned out the carbs and sprayed some premix into the crankcase and combustion chamber to lubricate things. Well, it started, but ran poorly. Upon inspection, I noticed fuel oil mix had blown out around the left crankcase seal, which is pretty well hidden by the drive primary clutch. Before this, I had seen some talk online about two-stroke crank seal replacement without disassembling the engine. Hey, I know what you're thinking, but do some research on two-stroke. Crankcases are usually tested at 6 PSI, and this type of seal replacement is common on two-cycle motorcycles. So I had a seal part number in hand, and here's what I did. Okay, we're looking at a 488 Fuji engine in a Polaris Indy Trail. It's a 95 Indy. And we bought the snowmobile to use as a parts vehicle. And it didn't run. It was cheap. Bought it for the clutch. But the motor seems okay on it, except that it had a blowing seal on the clutch side. And that's been causing it not obviously to run. So what we've already done is we've removed the, the primary clutch with a three quarter inch by 16 threads per inch by two and a half inch long bolt as the primary pulling bolt and underneath that we put a 5 8 inch by four and a half inch shaft inside the clutch so we've stacked them in there like that inside the drive clutch or primary clutch I'll use the terms interchangeably here and pop that primary clutch off of the engine so we've completed that We can see the seal was blowing, and what we've done is we drilled a small hole in, to, in it. Obviously, you don't want to run the drill bit into the bearings, but you can get an idea how deep the bearing is from looking at it. Then we've threaded a screw into it and used a slide hammer to pop it off. And you could do something else, but a slide hammer with that screw in that hole, sliding that weight back on it, really worked well. So if you have a slide hammer, it really worked well. Now, this isn't the prescribed way of fixing a blown crankcase seal on the Fuji 488. It's not even the same seal that we're going to use to put back in it. It's a Skidoo model seal. The seal that comes out of it has a ridge on it and it fits into a corresponding groove in the engine. Now you can only do that by splitting the case, which is a lot of work and I've done it. You've seen it on my other videos doing that and sealing the engine back up. So this is the original seal that came out of it, popped out with the slide hammer. Took a ride over to MFG Manufacturing, and we bought a seal. It was only $3, actually a little bit less. Now that seal does not have that ridge on it. We'll take it out of the package here. Okay, the new seal looks like this. Smooth on the outside. Of 
We're going to put a little grease in here on the inside before installing it. And on the outside, we're going to use Permatex Moto Seal. Okay. We're going to put it in here and probably a thin film on the seal itself. We're going to put it in there in sufficient quantity to to uh, pack some in that groove in there. The seal, even if it pushes some of that inside the motor, that sealant shouldn't cause any problems. Whether the bearings ingest it, it gets blown out of the engine. Remember, this is a two-stroke engine, and what's in the crankcase, pretty much, will get exhausted outside through the exhaust ports. It's not going into a chamber of oil, and since it's just a type of... Uh, it's not a metallic item. It should just be able to work itself through the engine if any of it works loose. So we're about ready to push that in here. Got to grease it. We're going to use an old bearing, the outer race of the bearing from that video I showed you before. When I cut through it and pop that off, we're going to use that to tap on instead of tapping on the seal itself. You can see from the thickness of the seal that it has more depth here than what the seal is. So we just want to tap it in flush out here with the outside of the crankcase. Now we'll test this engine later on and see, and I'll show you that. But if you wanted to, you could place some type of metal over the seal if you were concerned with it, you know, blowing out to keep it in place. You could just take a square piece of aluminum. There's enough space there between the clutch and this, and there's enough depth here to where you could drill and tap some small holes in here and secure a cap over that if you were concerned with it blowing that out. But from what I'm re I've read, people have had good luck with this, and we're simply going to go with it without doing that. But if you have concerns, you could use that if you really have concerns, take the motor apart and do it the right way. Okay, we've cleaned this out with alcohol, rags, Q-tips. At first we scrubbed it out with some Scotch-Brite material, tried to get it as clean as we possibly could. You're only going to get it so well. Uh, but we've cleaned it as best we can. And we're ready to start the assembly process. After doing research online, I was comfortable going with the Permatex Moto Seal. Got the best deal on it through Rocky Mountain. It says to brush it on, let it on both surfaces, let it sit for a minute, and put it together. It's much more liquid than any type of Permatex or anything. They said to brush it on, and I can see why they said that now. But we've started with our finger. We'll continue with our finger. Okay, we put mobile one around the inner seal. 
Got to put this bugger on there. We're going to get a little on our fingers doing this. Okay, I think we're going to go with that. So, this stuff's more liquid than I expected. And uh, so you have to work pretty fast with it. Get it in there flush with the engine case. And we're going to wait several days before we test this says to give it 24 hours we'll give it more than that because it's July and I'm not going anywhere on it right now anyway we made a little bit of a mess but the proof will be in the pudding so we'll try it out next Okay, we're in the shop with an auxiliary fuel line on the 95 Indy, and we're going to try starting it. We've already started it. We primed it, started it, ran it, set the idle on it just minutes ago. The seal and everything's looking okay. We're going to start it up again. Here we go.